We've got the J.P. Morgan shareholder meeting this today. And of course, it's coming at an, at an awkward time with J.P. Morgan reporting big losses. We've got Lisa Lindsley, the director of capital strategies from the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees joining us. Lisa, tell us a little bit about the shareholder proposal that you have out there. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Um, yeah, our proposal is that it calls on the board of directors to establish an independent board chair so that Jamie Dimon wouldn't be both the chief executive officer and the chairman of the board, because as chairman of the board, he's effectively his own boss. The job of the board is to oversee the executives and represent the shareholders. And when you have the chief executive uh, running the board, uh, you have a, an inherent conflict of interest. Now, you had this proposal up last year as well. Did you get good support? And, and how do you think the support will build this year? Actually, we, did, we didn't have the proposal up last year. Um, the highest amount of votes that this proposal has received was in 2005 when it got 40%. Okay. Um, but, you know, now 40% uh, of S&P 500 companies have an independent chair. It's mandatory in the UK. We really think that this is an, uh, it's a best practice whose time has come. And particularly with financial services institutions that, that have already driven the economy into the ditch once, they need independent board leadership. Now, the J.P. Morgan board says that they can defeat this proposal. And even if you get, if you secure the votes, they're saying that they won't necessarily, it's not binding, they won't recognize it. They're going to leave Jamie Dimon as chairman. What, what do you say to that? Well, I think that uh, it would be a mistake for them to not listen to, uh, to what shareholders want. And often, uh, you're, they're, they're correct and you're correct that it is an advisory proposal. So the objective here is not to get 51%. It's to, uh, to listen to, sh to what shareholders are, are thinking and how shareholders want the company to be run. Because at the end of the day, the company belongs to the shareholders. It doesn't belong to the board or to Jamie Dimon. Now, what do you make of some of the people that have, have left in, in the wake of this, this big scandal? Like Ina Drew, the, the, ch the head of the chief investment office, since 2005, she's gone. Are some of these people that have left, is, is that enough to maybe help fix what ails J.P. Morgan, in your opinion? Look, we're not inside the bank, uh, and that, that's, that's the job of the board, is to oversee the bank and make sure that there's a, there are appropriate risk controls in place, and obviously there were not. I uh, personally think that these, this is just optics, uh, getting rid of these people, uh, you know, to, to show that the bank has done something immediately. It's, it's just playing, you know, playing to the crowd. But, but I think what's really needed is an independent board chair uh, who will make sure that there are appropriate risk controls in place and stand up to Jamie Dimon. And tell us a, a little bit about what, what your view is on, say, the Volcker Rule or other potential sure. regulations you that know, could come down the line. Right. You know, I get asked a lot uh, if this, if, uh, you know, if J.P. Morgan had had an independent chair, would this $2 billion loss have happened? And in all likelihood, it's entirely possible that this loss would have happened. Uh, but what I can say is that if the Volcker Rule had been implemented and if Title VII, the derivative uh, portion of Dodd-Frank, had been implemented uh, as, as it was conceived by legislators, then this, uh, this betting would have been impossible. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck today.